Good morning. In this video, we're going to clean up a raster using the nibble tool in ArcGIS Pro. So in particular, our raster is going to be the output of a classification. So it's an 8-bit integer, in which case we have uh, various classes. This pinkish is going to be grass. This purplish is going to be wetland. And notice that what we have is some isolated pixels of wetland class within our grass. And we know those are wrong. And one strategy to clean them up or get rid of them is to identify them based on the size of the cluster. So we're saying, look, if you're a small cluster, maybe three pixels, maybe six pixels, you're probably misclassified. So what we're going to end up doing in this video is first use the region group tool to establish the size of those pixel clusters. Then we're going to mask out the small clusters using the set null tool. And then we're going to replace the small clusters using the nibble tool. So I'm going to give you a quick preview on each of these tools. So the first one we're going to use is region group. So what this does, it goes through the entire classified raster. Again, this has got to be an integer raster, right? And it identifies which pixels are connected to each other, which pixels of the same value are connected to each other. And it breaks them into groups, and then it assigns each group a unique ID. So let's take a look at this. Here we've got a group of ones next to each other. This is going to be identified and assigned to a group value of one. Here we've got a, group, a couple of zeros next to each other. That's going to be called group two. Here we've got th some twos next to each other. That's going to be assigned to group three, and so on. So the important thing is once you're done region group, you have a raster output. It's the same size as the input, but uh, the pixel values themselves simply represent which group those pixels have been assigned into. And importantly, this raster also has a field now called count where in its attribute table, where it keeps track of how many pixels are in each of these unique groups. And so that is the basis for our next step, where we're going to basically use the set null tool to take any of those groups from the previous step that are less than a certain threshold size and assign those pixels to null. And this is a little bit, or to no data, this is a little bit confusing, but here's the example. Uh, in this input raster, maybe we decide we're going to set uh, group 4 to be null. Okay, and so then here's what our output looks like. Those pixels that were in group 4 are now null. And this is actually going to become a mask, where we're going to go on to our third step, and essentially uh, any pick, we're going to use this as an overlay mask. So any of the pixels that have no data are going to end up being replaced in our final output. And that final step is going to be using the nibble tool. So again, uh, we're going to put in input raster. In this case, this is actually going to be our original classified raster. Here's the mask that we just made using the set null tool. So in this example, the, uh, the blank pixels are no data, and these represent the pixels that uh, belonged to some of the smallest groups, you know, those little clusters of two pixels or three pixels. Those ones were assigned to null. Any pixels that were part of the larger groups have a value of one or some other number, and so we're going to use this as a mask. We're going to overlay this on the original raster, and then what's going to happen is any of these no data pixels are going to be nibbled. They're going to, what's going to happen is the, they're going to take on the value of the, the nearest pixel by Euclidean distance. Let's do a specific example. Here's a no data pixel, okay? It had a corresponding value of seven in the input. All right, so that seven's going to be gone. And it's going to take on a value of 4, which was the nearest pixel by Euclidean distance. Same thing for this pixel. Its nearest pixel was 4 by Euclidean distance. All right, these pixels over here, their nearest pixels were minus 3 by Euclidean distance. So you can see that 
uh, in this output raster, we have now replaced all of the no data pixels. And we've turned this input into this cleaned up output raster. Okay, so we got a three step process, region group, set null, and nibble. Now, let's go to GIS. Ordinarily, we would maybe try to do this in a function chain or a function editor, but that doesn't seem to be working well, particularly with uh, what we need to do with the set null tool. So we're gonna do this kind of manually, do each step uh, individually. And we're gonna start out, uh, here's our study area. It's the Crown Point State Historic Site in New York. What we're actually working with is an unsupervised uh, classification output. And this has already been put through the majority filter to be cleaned up a little bit. So again, uh, each pixel value here corresponds to a class. And let's zoom in maybe to this area we already talked about. Pinkish color is grass and the uh, isolated darker pixels are wetland, but they are incorrectly classified. So you see that's all grass and we got some wetland pixels that we are trying to get rid of. Okay, so our first step is going to be that region group tool. So for all these tools, we can find them under analysis and the toolbox. And we're gonna just search for region group. There it is. Our input raster, of course, is gonna be our, our classified raster. This is an integer. This doesn't work on floating point. Uh, for output, we are going to actually specify this to a file. We've had network issues going into GeoDatabase, so we're going to give this a name. Okay, we, we gave it a name with a .tiff extension. Uh, importantly, we're going to use all eight neighbors, so we're going to define connectivity between pixels as if a given pixel is touching any of its eight neighbors. And very importantly, we're going to use the within. This means that we're identifying clusters based on them being next to neighbors of the same value. A pretty cool tweak on this is if you use the cross option, it identifies clusters of pixels based on being next to any other pixel that is not the excluded value. So that actually is, could be a pretty powerful tool. But in this case, we're gonna use within and we don't need to create a link field. All right, so we'll hit run and pause while this computes. Okay, so this has popped up and I just wanna show you briefly uh, what this is. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna click on this with my information tool and notice uh, this region group output, that is group number 3384, okay? This group over here is group number 3383. So this region group output raster the pixel values literally are the ID of the group, if that makes sense. And if we also open up the attribute table of that region group output, what we see is um, <clears throat> each of those groups. So we have, you know, 4,600 different groups. And for each group, there's a count, which is the number of pixels in that group. So this particular group, number 4595, only has one pixel in it. All right, so now that we've made that, our next step is to go to the set null tool. So again, we'll go back to analysis, go to our toolbox, and we'll search for that set null tool. Here it is, set null, not is null. So our conditional raster is going to be the region group raster that we just made. And we're going to put in a conditional statement here to select the pixels that we want to set null. So we're gonna set them null wherever the count is less than 10. So we're gonna be a little bit aggressive. Any group with less than 10 pixels is gonna get set null and replaced. Now, if it's greater than 10 pixels and it's not getting set null, we're just gonna output it to a constant value of one. And we are gonna save this as a TIFF and we're gonna call it rg underscore set null dot tiff so we can keep track of the steps that it's been through. Okay, so that finished and our mask has now come up. I'm gonna close the set null tool. 
Can't say much for the color scheme, but could be worse. And what you can see here is uh, this output of the set null has a value of 1, shown in puke green, wherever uh, the groups were greater than a size of 10, and it has no data wherever the groups were less than 10 pixels. So you can see all these little groups we're actually seeing through the mask raster into that underlying uh, classified image. So for example, these little pixel groups, we now have a mask that has those masked with no data. And next, we're going to replace those pixel groups by combining this mask with the underlying classified image using the nibble tool. So we'll go to tools, we'll find our nibble tool, and our input raster is going to be that original unsupervised image we're working with, okay? And our mask is going to be the thing we just made, the output from the set null. And we are going to uncheck uh, using no data. We want to replace all the no datas. And we will save this as an output. So now I'm going to save this with majority underscore nibble so I can keep track of both of the smoothing operations that have been done on it. We're going to leave input zone blank and go ahead and run it. Okay, so that nibble operation completed and we can do kind of an overlay comparison of what we started with and what we finished with. And you can see the color schemes are a bit different, but if you focus on this kind of pink salmon color, that's the grass class, you can see we've cleaned that up considerably. We've gotten rid of a lot of those uh, tiny incorrect pixel groups of wetland. Thanks for listening and happy smoothing.